Welcome to another episode of Pro Style Podcast. And I must say we have Birmingham again on the map. A product of Minor High School, Sanford University, right over there in Homewood. Hey man, please welcome Chicago Bears on my man Nick Williams. How you doing, Nick? Hey, how you doing, man? Glad to be on, bro. Man, I appreciate you coming on. You know what I mean? Like we ran into each other, I think, in Birmingham in 2013 at Joe Webb Camp. We just kind yeah. of stayed in touch. Yeah. Things have been, you know, pretty cool. We, I've watched you grow as a player, as a man, your family. Congratulations on everything. And so, thank you. you know, but my question is, at what point in high school did you know, like, I have the it factor to make it to the next level? Man, I didn't know crap in high school, bro. <laughs> I had, um, I had always played basketball, and mm. I didn't play, I didn't play football until my twelfth grade year. So. When I went out for the football team, I ain't know I had nothing. I was just out there running around, making <laughs> plays, and just so happened, uh, Sanford's uh, head coach and D line coach was at one of the games we were playing against Hoover High. Yeah, and I had like a I had like a pick six, a uh, uh, few few tackles for loss, and I was okay. still just I still didn't know I had that that it factor. I was just out there playing, right? And so happened to get a scholarship, and then the rest kind of history. When I made it to college. I still didn't know I had it. Like I red shirted, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I red shirted my freshman year. Yeah. You know, put on some weight, and uh, they moved me. I was playing DN in high school, and they moved me to uh, D tackle. Hmm. And uh, man, I think I guess around my I guess around my junior year, my red shirt junior year, when my when my roommate Corey White got drafted. Yeah. To the uh, to the Saints. I was like, damn, maybe I can make it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, I, like, I, I see other people, like, Cortland. Cortland had came before us, Cortland Finnegan. He had came, like, a, a few years before us. So, when my when my roommate went, I was like, damn, I probably can make it. So, right. So I didn't find out. I didn't find out to, like, college. Yeah. <laughs> that, I, that, I could, that I could make it. Because not a lot of people know about Hoover High School, but Hoover is a, a very dominant high school, has been in the state of Alabama, I mean, probably the last 20 years or so. Man, any any high school, any high school with their own show. Yeah. On MTV, it used to be the uh, two a day show. See, a lot any of high, people don't know about that reality TV show that they had back in the day. Nobody know about yeah. it. And I forget who the quarter. I forget who the quarterback was. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who the quarterback was, but one of those guys played little league with me at Crestwood. His name was Repeat, and his dad was the coach. And when I saw the uh, show, I was like, "Dang, I should have went to Hoover." Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't care about football or anything. I was just like, "Man, these folks got a reality TV show." Like, man. Like, yeah, you know I mean, like in high school, like I could have been on TV already. So I thought that was you already cool. know. Yeah, and I train. I train in Birmingham now, and I still hear about Hoover. Like I'm in Birmingham right now training, and I still hear about Hoover High. Uh, yeah. Of course, you're gonna hear about Spain Park and all Spain those, Park. all those type of high, high Mount schools. Mount Brook. So. Mount Brook. Yeah, best area. I mean, those those teams they they're still doing it. They've been doing it for the past yeah. twenty years, and. Homewood, they'll continue to, you know, be just dominant in the state of yeah. Alabama. And so, Sanford, yeah, how, how did you choose Sanford out of other offers that you had? What what made Sanford so? Man, what made it so what made it so good is that it was just home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, I, I I was able to stay home, stay where I was born, where I was raised, stay in Birmingham. I had my family here. And like I said, I only played 12th grade, so I got I got like letters from like big schools. Yeah. But at that time, at that time, back in like 2007, 2008, when I graduated mm -hmm. high school, guys were like getting offers pretty much when they were sophomores yeah. in high school. Like they were committing. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, dang, bro. So I got I got letters from all the big schools, but they wish I would have played. They wish they would have more film on me, more time to see me. Mm. So um, I got I got uh, some black school offers yeah. like uh, Gramlin, Southern University, uh, Alabama A and M. I got those offers, but ultimately, I wanted to play at a at a, at a bigger stage. You yeah. know, San, I mean, Sanford it's a small school, but we get to play like uh, big schools and uh at that time we were in the SoCon and uh we were playing teams like App State, 
yeah. App State had just played Michigan and beat them. So I was like, dang, bro, if we get to play them teams, <laughs> I can get some I can get some good exposure. So yeah. it was pretty much a it was pretty much a win win for me, uh picking Sanford. Nice. That's dope. Yeah. Hey, Sanford is a beautiful campus, man. Right there. Man, that's what everybody say. It's so nice. <laughs> I never forget my first time going there to a football camp. I was just looking around. I was there with my cousin. I was like, yo, this is nice. Like, <laughs> yeah. Coming from the yeah. west side of town, you know, miners over there on the west side of town. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's different. Obviously. So it's different when you get to home where you're like, yo, this is really nice. You know, like every Man, time. The only time, the only time I, I didn't even know Sanford was over there. Like when I was, <laughs> when I was growing up, like I, I grew up in Inslee on yeah. the west side, west side of Birmingham. So yeah. the only time I came to Lakeshore was go to Brookwood Mall. That's it. And that I used to pass right past Sanford, and I'm yeah. like, I don't even know what's over there. But they got some nice flowers. It's like a country club over there. Yeah. So yeah. I then, hit, I, then I end up going to college there. It's crazy. Yeah. Hit that mall or hit that Walmart right there off Lakeshore. Hit <laughs> that wall, that Walmart still booming. <laughs> yeah. That was about it. Well, man, yeah, you go into the draft, get drafted, seventh round. Mm -hmm. uh, a great franchise, you know, the Steelers. I mean, yeah. Think back to Franco Harris, even up until now with Big Ben and those guys. How was it being in that organization? What What you like about it? Man, it was a. It was a. I've been blessed to be a part of like a lot of prestigious, uh, historical type of organizations, and uh, being part of the Steelers. Just them drafting me was was like crazy. It was like mind blowing. Just to be in the same locker room as like Troy Polamalu. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Big Ben. At that time, Brett Kiesel mm. uh, was was like on his last two years. And he was like a monster on the D line. Mm. And uh just to be just to be in that organization was crazy. It was I was I'm was forever indebted. In, in was that? Was Fanica there? No, 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 he wasn't mm. there. Okay. Nah, he wasn't there. He was a but uh it was a lot of it was a lot of great players. There was a lot of great players there. Yeah. No, he he was a beast, man. Uh, I never forget we played them and and we talked about him, but but then we talked about Troy Palomalu and how literally in cover two he would be at the line of scrimmage, and somehow he would make it all the way all back. the way back, and nobody <laughs> understood how he did it. Like <laughs> we just be like, man, it's just, it's Troy. Like every and Troy Palomalu was the only two guys that I've ever yeah. seen in life do that. Like at the snap man. of the ball, they get all the way back. Troy, man, Troy was a special player, man. Yeah. And um, I remember he never, he never lifted weights. Like he, <laughs> like he told me, he told me one day his trainer, he used to train out in California where he went to college at. And um, his trainer said, don't lift another free weight. We only do like uh, el elastic bands or some, some he was doing, he never lifted weights. Yeah. And I was like, how is this dude like killing people on the field? Like, how is he able to keep up his body, his body able to uh, keep up with the season? Right. And man, he hit somebody. We we're playing, we we're playing the Jets. And he hit this wide receiver so hard. <laughs> I ain't even tell, I ain't even tell you what happened, but he hit him so hard. I was like, how is he generating this without lifting weights? You know what right. I'm saying? So yeah, he was, a, he, was a, he was a special type player. He told me he watched, he told me he didn't watch film to know what the other team was doing. He watched film to see what he could do. Yeah. In in uh different type of situations. So oh. great player. Well you know we know we gotta jump right into it, right? Cause I know you played with What's the up, bro? You played with the Dolphins. But I mean mm -hmm. you with the Bears now. Windy City, Shaw Town, stand up. Yeah, yeah. Man, a lot of momentum behind you guys right now, especially off of last season. What's the mm -hmm. team? How you guys feeling? How was the off season? I mean, I got so many questions, but just 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 give me the team morale right now. How's everybody feeling going into the season? Man, we're going into the season. I can I can speak for the defense. Man, mm -hmm. we want it all. We just wanna we really wanna uh pick up where we left off at. Yeah. You know, the season last year kind of ended on a low note. Yeah. You know, we're not gonna get I hope we don't get into <laughs> how the season ended, but uh <laughs> man, we I mean we wanna we wanna pick up where we where we left off at. And we yeah. want to be the most uh, dominant group or uh, unit uh, going into the 2019 season in yeah. this period. Because a lot of guys think you're going to take a step back after losing D coordinator Vic Fangio. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that. I feel like uh, Chuck Pagano brings a lot a lot of great things to the table. Yeah. You know, I can't 
I don't want to go into our scheme or whatever like that, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be coming, you know. Yeah. And uh, Chuck Pagano is an aggressive type coach, and that's what that's how we were last year mm. uh, with Vic. So uh, I don't think we'll take a step back. I feel like if if all the guys, if, if we all believe in the system, believe in yeah. Chuck's uh, defense calling, then we'll, yeah. we'll we'll pick right back up where we left off. Yeah. So the blockbuster trade last year. They brought Khalil Mack to Chicago. Yeah. Bolster that defense. How has Khalil helped you as a player? Man, Khalil is a special player, man. I, I mean, the first from the from the first day he got there. I mean, he got there like probably like a week before we played the Packers. Yeah. And man, even in even in like one on ones, <laughs> like week one and one on ones in practice. I was like, this dude, this dude right here, he a monster. <laughs> like, it don't, it don't make sense. It don't make sense, really. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, he's he's helped, he's helped a lot. You know, he plays outside linebacker, so yeah. I mean, when he's in the game, I mean, every everything, everything is gonna slide to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it helps, it helps Akeem out, it helps Eddie Goldman out, it helps me out, it helps all the guys out. So, I mean, just being just being around him, you'll want to up your game. To, to meet his level, you know what I'm saying? So it makes you better in the long run. So what are you looking to improve on this season as a player, personally? Because obviously the, 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 the end goal is to win the Super Bowl. But oh, individually, yeah. individually, what are you looking to improve on? I feel, like, I feel like in this defensive line unit group, I'm like a Swiss Army knife. So hmm. I can come in and play any position along the D-line, you know, Things I want to improve on really is my pass rush. Yeah, you know, being able to because I can I can stop the run. You know, I can I can stop the run when I want to, mm-hmm. but uh, just being able to rush the passer at a, at a consistent base basis is uh, something I want to get better at. So yeah. that's yeah. one thing. Well, hey man, we know that the ties are high. The fans are excited. I'm excited. Can't wait till the season start. But let's switch gears a little bit. Pro style looks at the symmetry between hip hop and sports. If I took your iPhone right now and hit play, what what would I hear? <laughs> man, <no. laughs> and I don't know what you might hear, man. What you got, man? I'm, I stick I stick to more like mainstream hip hop, man. I don't really dive too deep. I re- I don't really listen to a lot of new new artists. Yeah. So you'll probably you'll probably hear some Drake. I got a lot of Drake. Yeah. That's pretty. That's pretty much. I feel like everybody listens to Drake. Yeah. Uh, future sometimes, and I listen to. I mean, I listen to a lot of Christian rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot, a lot of uh, Andy Minio, mm-hmm. Cray, KB, those type guys. You know, and uh, I, I kind of, I've kind of got away from like the hardcore rap. You know. Yeah. So, trying so, to be a family guy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so here's my question: Would you endorse Drake wearing a Chicago Bears jersey? During the Super Bowl, nah, he don't need to put that on, man. He need, he need to. Hey, whatever, whatever team we not, we not, uh, we playing. Whatever yeah. team we playing, he need yeah. to wear that jersey. <laughs> we'll be, we'll be good, man. The Drake curse, the Drake curse is real, bro. Hey, hey, Drake, Drake out here cursing everybody, man. Like, <laughs> like come on, he just cursed, he just cursed Anthony Joshua. That's so, right. Man. <laughs> Nah, bro. Drake can keep that over there. One of the best pound for pound heavyweight fighters of all time goes down. <laughs> a, a a butter bean, butterball looking guy. Man, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, one punch. That's all it takes in boxing is one punch. Yeah, and then Toronto, Drake cursed the whole uh, <laughs> Golden State team. They yeah. just start dropping. Yeah. So yeah, no, bro. Yeah. So so no Drake jersey, but you love his music listen to a little future. What's the symmetry that you see between hip hop and sports? Because a lot of people look at the competitive nature of a Drake, right? He's like super competitive. The beef that he had with Pusha T, you know, the beef that he had with Chris Brown, the beef that he had with Meek Mills. And yeah. now look at it. They're still cool and friends. So I kind of look at, you know, the rivalry, you know, like the Packers bears rivalry. Like there's some guys that you're cool with, on the Packers team, I mean, safety just left the Bears and went to the Packers. I don't know, Amos, yeah. Amos. But what's the symmetry that you see between the two? I think it's like you said, it's just a uh, competitive nature. 
Yeah. You know, everybody wants to be the best in hip hop. You got guys coming out of the woodworks talking about they're a rapper, <laughs> but they're not doing it at a, you know what I'm saying? They're not doing it at a level like Drake or right. Jay Z or yeah. Future, you know what I'm saying? So, I feel like there's a lot of uh, good symmetry, but the, the biggest thing is like what you said, it's just a competitive drive yeah. to be the best. And um, if you got somebody coming up trying to uh, compete against you, I mean, you want to you yeah. put them in the dirt, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of that in hip hop, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also competitive that, nature. that consistent piece too, right? A lot of people mm -hmm. don't know for Nick Williams to stay in the NFL, he has to be consistent. Be consistent, like yeah. Every game, like you go out, you got to perform. Mm -hmm. Like if Drake put out some trash songs like back to back, uh, it ain't gonna be looking too good for him. You know what I mean? Like people are gonna start <laughs> questioning, like, yeah, is that ghostwriter gone? You know, things of that nature. So like, <laughs> if you don't play well, they're gonna say, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. If, yeah, if we got to we got to send you. We gonna have to send you back to Sanford. <laughs> That's what they gotta do. Send you back to Inslee. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like I feel like you gotta stay consistent with it. Right. I feel like Drake. Drake has been like, yeah. I, I feel like he's had he's had levels like if you listen to his like mixtapes yeah you're like what is you like what is this but then he he like up the up the level up the level yeah. and that's what you got to do just like what you asked me uh earlier what's one thing I can work on I feel like Drake worked on every, something every year right. and got that sound right and I mean people just people just buying his album buying his little singles on iTunes every day so that's very true. Well, hey, Nick, man, it's been good catching up with you, man. I, I know. Hey, hey, much, much love. Best of luck this season. How can the people follow you on social media? Man, follow me at Nick Williams underscore 98, man. That's that's my uh, Twitter handle and that's my uh, Instagram. And I only do Twitter and Instagram. Nick <laughs> Williams underscore 98. There it is, man. That's my man, Nick Williams. I appreciate you being on Pro Style, bro. Best of luck this season. Looking forward to seeing you guys in the Super Bowl. Thanks for being on, bro. Much love. Man, thanks for having me, bro. Yes, sir.